<laughs> Sorry, I'm lost here now. Right. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Matter of Britain. Me and Adam here again. Um, tonight, we are joined, let's say tonight, whenever you're watching this. Uh, tonight, we're joined by uh, Martin, who's uh, my friend from the Snake Bros Discord. Um, he's been doing some fantastic work on the Thornborough Henges for, for quite a while. Um, we're really going to dive into uh, some uh, megalithomania, Britain's in history style. Um, I hope you enjoy it. And uh, yeah, let's go. Oh, good. This uh, Thornborough Henge is kicking off. Brilliant. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, it'd be great to hear a bit about you first. Yeah, um, okay. And then, we'll, and then we'll go into it. Okay. Uh, I'm now retired, but uh, I started life uh, as a two-room apprentice in the aircraft industry so when you get all this stuff from Chris Dunn and everything about um, accuracy I pretty much understand what he's saying <laughs> and most most people just book blank I think when uh, when he starts, starts talking about multi um, what uh, multi-headed milling and stuff like that yeah yeah <laughs> That took me a few Wikipedia's to get that. That's um, right. <laughs> I, I'd love to do some some Chris Dunn on here, Adam, and I think I probably will bring him up um, uh, when I do a bit on on granite working. So um, yeah, uh, he's written some great books, but yeah, his work <laughs> on precision is very interesting indeed, isn't it? Yeah, I think um, something on granite working it'd be great actually. But... Mm. Yeah, so um, let's so... hear more, Marty. So I did that for ooh, four or five years, and then um, I got into the IT industry, which I spent spent a life at, and it was uh, it was good to me in the long run. Uh, I then retired. Uh, right up until when I retired, uh, I was really mainstream in my views. So if it wasn't uh, a genuine sort of authorised thing from some professor somewhere. I just wasn't interested in it, you know. Mm. Uh, but then I I guess the thing that got me eventually going into it was that um, the, the rock that killed the dinosaurs uh, was uh, sort of that became an authorised thing, you know, so the... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and after that, I then started reading about this Younger Dryas thing. And I thought, well, if a rock can kill the dinosaurs, maybe a rock can kill uh, what was around at that point, you know, mm. our ancestors. <laughs> uh, so I started digging into that, and of course that gets you into Randall Carlson and... Uh, Eventually, you get round to um, uh, Brothers of the Serpent and Ben and all the others. Um, I guess these are not new names to you, Adam. But uh... no, 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 not thanks to Peter. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> hang on about it, and, uh, and we'll put some. We'll we'll put some links in the in the notes and things if we. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll do that so everyone's accredited. Yeah. So, but I I've never ever thought of doing anything myself. Uh, until we got to the uh, the lockdown for COVID, mm, you right. bloody well got to do something in a lockdown. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but I just joined the Brothers of the Serpent dis uh, Discord, uh, and I was chatting one night over a whiskey um, to one of the ladies there. Um, and she lives in uh, Wakefield, so we naturally got chatting about Yorkshire stuff. Um, and that sort of started off, I mean, I knew practically nothing about it apart from Ilkley Moor, because Ilkley Moor was sort of 10 miles from where I lived, so I'm mm. on Ilkley Moor very often. Uh, it's one of the most boring places on earth. <laughs> 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 the the only good bit about it is that it's a sort of um, uh, ridge between uh, the Air Valley and the Wharfdale Valley, uh, so you can see miles in every direction. And I suspect that might be why there's quite a lot of megaliths there. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Uh, but um, so we got looking at those, and I'll talk about it as we go through this. But uh, that then got me into uh, digging deeper. And you'll see as we go through this, I think if 25% of what I'm going to say today is true, uh, that it will call for a radical rethink on what we think about Neolithic people in this country. Uh, and I'm not saying it's all true, but everything that I'm going to tell you uh, is you can measure it on a map or you can uh, go and look at it or whatever. So none of it's made up. Mm. It's, yeah. but, but you have to, I mean, some of it might be just coincidence. That's the thing. We can we can all just take our own interpretations yeah, from the same yeah. sets of data, but the data's there That's whether right. yeah. whether someone yeah. likes it or not. It's there. Yeah. As you say, you can check it yourself and and that's what it's for, isn't it? It's for us, yeah, for, yeah, right. for people to, to look at it themselves and make yeah. their own minds up about things. And the yeah. problem is you can't get into the minds of these people. I mean, it was 5,000 years ago, mm. and what they were thinking, they they had a, a diff, completely different culture to what we have now. Uh, and one of the things I was going to say at the beginning, actually, is... Uh, I've not done much at all on sort of the culture of these people. There's a little bit in here about it. Um, uh, and all the sort of um, folk tales and stuff that you go into and uh, try and prove history that way, mm. uh, I don't know anything about. So if you want to come in at any point and say, ah, yes, I recognise that or whatever. Yeah, sure. No problem. Yeah. That sounds great. Absolutely. Yeah. So... What I want to talk about, at least to begin with, is the Yorkshire megalithic uh, complex, as it says on the screen. And that uh, is effectively the hunter, the bull, the seven sisters and the devil. Now, if right. anyone now who knows anything about the stars will probably guess what I'm going to be talking about. So just, just a clue. <laughs> but in here... Uh, we have cathedrals, we have uh, pyramids, uh, we have uh, talk about England, obviously, but Wales, uh, France, Egypt. Mm -hmm. um, there's quite a lot about the devil, I think, as Pete knows. I, mm -hmm. was, I went through a phase of collecting uh, sites with the name devil attached to them. Mm. Uh, and I think some of it's paid benefits. So let's just go to the next screen. And so this is an index of what's there. Um, so we start by talking about the uh, the specific sites uh, and how we got there. Um, and the first phase, really, down to uh, number five there, is all about my initial discovery of this star map in Yorkshire. Uh, it's a story from my point of view down to there. So what I did, how I did it, um, and s some of it's a bit sort of um maybe maybe edgy but we'll see when we get there <laughs> uh after that i dis uh, i take myself out of it totally and just go through what i found but i think the first bit is as i said i started off being um really core hardcore uh if if it wasn't authorized i didn't believe it mm -hmm. now i've reached the point of most things that people know can't be true, uh, or at least they can't prove it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. How and you, you get down, you get down to the details, it can't be true. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. can't, can you? No. So um, the map behind here, by the way, is the oldest map I've found with the Thornborough henges on. And if you look under the O of Yorkshire, you can see the top henge, and then there's another two further down. Oh yeah, I just about got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. on the on the yeah. title there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Ripon is bottom, just left of the middle. Uh, and Ripon is going to be significant later on. But I, when I started all this, I had no idea that it would be. 
Mm. Fascinating. Great. So, let's let's go then. So Ilkley Moor, he's just mentioned it before. Uh, there's loads of stuff on Ilkley Moor. I think the best known, uh, there's two of them actually. Um, the Twelve Apostles is uh, a small stone circle, it's not very spectacular. I probably built by the Beaker people, given the size of it, because mm. they didn't have much imagination and certainly they didn't hold big stuff around. Mm. Um, has the it, looks, it looks like a lot of our circles here, about you, on Dartmoor. Yeah, that's right. Sort of very similar yeah but you can see the views i mean if you want a view of the sun rising over something mm. that's the place to have it yeah perfect stargazing yeah yeah, yeah. right uh, there's another one there grub stones which i guess i mean somebody must have found it buried under the heather at one day and eventually the the local people managed to keep it clear <laughs> uh not very exciting but this is a oh, wow. swastika stone. Yeah. Now, that is pretty well known. And um, there are all sorts of theories about what it might be. Mm -hmm. My opinion of this, and I'll come to, I'll mention it again later, is that the the uh, cups, uh, or the rings of, of the column, it's cup and ring stone. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for putting other stones in as counting or measuring uh, devices. Oh. So you're trying to measure time, I think, somehow or other. Okay. Um, so you move a stone every time there's a full moon. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Oh, and there's some sort of natural progression from one, yeah, say, yeah. arm of the swastika to the next. Yeah, something in, like that. Yeah. Internal to external. Or... That's right, yeah. yeah. And and one of them, you know, two of them might mark the uh, lunar maximum or something like that. Do you know how what they date this stone to? Uh, no, I've no. not looked at the dating of any of these. This is how I got into it. So I was Oh, yeah, of course, Shannon. yeah. Sorry, uh, it's not getting far uh, too... <laughs> Get ahead of myself. That's right. So it was <laughs> Shannon from the Discord. Yeah, and, oh, yeah, um, yeah, great. So we were chatting away and uh, we were saying, oh, what do you know? What do I know? And so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so I've not dated any of that. I did have a look to see if I could find any alignments uh, to the moon and sun on it. Mm. But um, those were in the days when I didn't know what I was doing. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's an honest response. <laughs> Uh, another couple of cup and ring stones. Yeah. So you can see, oops, sorry, I'm going backwards. There, <laughs> try again. There. So you can see again on that bottom one that there seems to be a path round it. Mm. So whether that's significant or not, I don't know. And the circular one, I think, is interesting because you get that sort of circular shape in lots of places. Yeah. 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 And, I'm not really sure what it is, but um, in fact, I'm not sure at all. Don't know what any of it is, but I can make them <laughs> yeah, <things>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So that's Ilkley Moor. Now, this uh, is yeah. the Devil's Arrows. So these are, it's a stone row uh, just outside uh, a town called Boroughbridge, which is next to the A1. And um, I came across them when I was in my, probably my teens, because in those days, you'd drive along the A1 and you'd see them because they were next to the road. Yeah. <laughs> but they've widened the A1 and you can't see them anymore. So I guess not many people now know that they're there. As it says here, uh, two, the largest and second largest, so the second and third largest uh, uh, standing stones in the UK. Uh, they've all got cup marks at the bottom. Quite why mm. that is, I don't know. But, oh, I don't know that. No. Um, so, some quote there, this is the greatest single stone row anywhere in the uh, British Isles. So just looking at these, the, the top left, that stone there is the smallest. Um, 
and if you look along you can see to its left there's uh, um there's one but just in the edge of those trees there's a third one <clears throat> which is the one on the picture to the right of it in the trees mm -hmm. that was my picture yeah. actually i pinched the rest oh no i didn't <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the ones to the uh, to the right are mine. The two to the left are other people's. You got a nice light on that day, though. Hmm? Got some uh, nice light on that day. I did. Yeah, it was a great day actually. Um, and I went up to Thornbury after that and mm. uh, had a a great time walking round uh, and doing some dowsing on the hinges. Oh, fab! Great. So. We like dowsing on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, once again, I've always been suspicious of it, you know, but, um, and it took me an age to get the rods to move. So, you know, you, you yeah. start by trying to get an affirmative response from them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so I was, uh, I, I kept saying, Show me a yes, show me a yes. And I had to do that about 50 times before anything happened. And I was just about to give up, and the, I thought, that looks as though it's a small movement. <laughs> uh, brilliant. And they course, definitely tease you. I have no <laughs> doubt about that. They do tease you. Uh, and, of course, once you get them going, uh, it's relatively easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. once you've got that relationship with them. That's right. Yeah. But the reason, I mean, this is out, I wasn't even going to mention this actually, but uh, but the reason I was dowsing there is I was talking to Shannon again about um, uh, the purpose of all this stuff. Mm. Uh, and she was saying, um, well, maybe it's earth energies, you know, and, mm. and you think, well, that's a little bollocks, can't possibly be. <laughs> <laughs> And um, but then you read Chris Dunn and you know yeah. put 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 a big pile of stone on a on a fault. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Might just, it might just vibrate. <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of power under our feet. There's no doubt That's about right. it. Yeah. And the, uh, and once again, it's not in this presentation, but there are faults that run underneath the devil's arrows. Really? Well, oh, right. It won't be a very active one because none of them in Yorkshire are. But no, <laughs> there no, is no, one. No. <laughs> uh, but um, so I went up there and I was looking for uh, a power line, effectively, you know, hmm. an energy line. Uh, and I think I found one. Um, so I was trying to follow it down from the central hinge to the southern hinge. And, you know, you get fed up of. Am I on the line? Am I on the line? So I, I just continued walking along. Uh, and after, I don't know, two or three hundred yards, I thought, I better check I'm still on the line. Uh, and so I said, am I on the line? And it gave me a, a, a negative. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I said, point me to the line. So it pointed back into the middle. So I sort of wandered to the edge. But I didn't think, you can't tell. It's difficult to tell. Yeah. Uh, so it pointed me into the middle and took me. And once I realised I was banging the middle of the line between the uh, central hinge entrance and the southern hinge entrance, once it got me back on. Yeah. Uh, and it was that experience that made me think there was something in it. Mm, sure it yeah. did. Sure did. <laughs> now, while we're talking about these energies... Um, when Shannon went here, she went before I did actually because I'd, I'd done I'd posted about the devil's arrows and what I thought they represented. So she decided to go and have a look because mm. um, she don't live that far away. I mean, I'm in Nottingham. Lucky. So it's like a two and a half hour drive. You know? oh, yeah. Uh, and in the old days when I was young, that would have been nothing. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so she went there, and she went with a new man and um, a, a picnic and all the rest of it. And they went down towards the uh, this uh, stone you can see on the uh, left top left there. 
which is the southern, uh, the sorry, the northern one. Mm. Uh, and she was walking out with out shoes on because she believes in getting grounded on these things, you know. Uh, and she said she almost got an electric shock. It felt like she was getting an electric shock. Uh, and it was really near to this. It, from what I can gather, and I've discussed it with her afterwards, it was just to the left of it, as you see that picture there. Well, when I was uh, at dowsing there, um, have you come across the concept of a PowerPoint? No. So power lines or energy lines um, are supposed to flow across the land somehow or other. Mm. Uh, and there's a site I came across that was talking about a PowerPoint where I envisage it, and I was talking to to a proper dowser about it, and they don't envisage it like this at all. But I envisage, <laughs> envisage it either like a spring of water coming out of the ground, right. or like a sink of water. Yeah, well, okay, so sort of like you know, if we have like a water table, those points where the water table gets either yeah, through aquifers right, yeah. or something, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I mean, if you walk the moors, you familiar with that sort of thing yeah yeah anyway so i was dowsing the line down here and it's difficult because there's crops there and all such um and i got to this stone and it just went went mad <laughs> mm. um so i said to it is there a powerpoint around it uh because i'd just come across it earlier that week uh and it said yes. <laughs> and when I got it to point it out, it was just about, uh, I'm trying to point to the screen and you can't yeah, see it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was about six foot to the left of that stone, which is exactly yeah. where Shannon got this experience. No way. Incredible. <laughs> Fantastic. Incredible. I love to hear personal experiences yeah. like that. I think they're absolutely brilliant. So it's something you, you miss by just sort of lightly researching a site. You don't really get all those, you know, yeah. Yeah. all those little perspectives. That's great. That's fantastic. Yeah. The other the other thing that, yeah, I, if I don't mention it now, I won't mention it. So when I went up to the Devil's Arrows on this occasion, um, and I went to Thornborough as well and did the dowsing, uh, I was having problems with my, with my blood pressure. I mean, I had a heart attack about seven or eight years ago uh, and had managed to control my blood pressure. And it seemed to be getting a bit out of control. This was about two or three years ago now, I guess. Uh, and I went up there and that was the last time uh, up until now that I've had problems with my blood pressure. Really? Oh, wrong. So I don't know whether the drugs have improved. <laughs> my attitude's improved. Uh, quite what? I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> you know, it could be something to do. What are these things for? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. No, I've definitely heard very similar healing stories as well or at least yeah. sites that are associated with them and also first-hand accounts as well yeah, um, yeah. I, i've definitely come across for um the, for ancient sites so yeah that's fantastic yeah the only thing i've heard anything similar to do with in terms of power you know uh power spots is something i don't know if this is the same thing or not but um gary Biltcliffe and his spine of albion and he talks about um the Bellinus line going from south to north, and there's like points across. There's like 33 node points. I don't know if it's the same thing or not, but people go there and offer healing in revert, like from the other way around. That makes sense. It's the only mm. sort of similar. It's Bill Teal down the front. <laughs> <laughs> He's that amazed. Um, yeah, no, that um, uh, that Gary Gary Biltless work looks really really good, and I'd like to um. Uh, look into more of that and yeah that spine of albium is very interesting idea i think yeah uh, especially uh, as a because i'm 
absolutely fascinated by the Michael line. So, um, I've got something about the Michael line further down. Actually. Oh, great. Let's I've, get going. I've, I've, I've got a competitor to it that runs parallel to it. Oh, fascinating. <laughs> Oh, Why not? Adam, can you just put it on hold for a minute? Yeah, of course, can. Yeah. Go. Okay. Uh, you may not have noticed, but that comment uh, at the bottom right came up as the last thing. Uh, now that is quite significant, actually, because although there are only three stones there now, we certainly know there were four because they're not one down and stuck it in a bridge somewhere. Uh, oh God! But you'll see that uh, this Peter Frank character says he's a seven. Mm. Uh, Doctor Stuckley uh, mentions five, uh, and John Leyland he he saw the four that we certainly know where there. But none of them had inscriptions on. Well, he didn't look very carefully because you can see if you look at the uh, one in the wood. Can you see about halfway up? There's some rings on it. Yeah. Oh, really? So what I want to try and do is uh, I was hoping to get uh, a LiDAR uh, app for my phone, but you can only get them for um, uh, um, Apple phones. I yeah, think. certain models of Apple phone, isn't it, yeah. at the birth, yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. but I thought scanning the, you know, the might might be a good idea, so scanning the stone. And I did. Really is there. I did also get one for my phone, Marty, but I was so thoroughly confused by the app as well. But that <laughs> that could just be me. <laughs> it could be uh, it could be fairly accessible. I was. Uh, is it an Android or is it an Apple? No, it's an it's an Apple. It's uh, what's the app I've got? It's called Polycam. But maybe I'm I could just be being dumb. I'm a bit of a luddite. <laughs> anyway, I want you to remember those seven. Stars. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay. So seven stones is the claim is the uh, maximum claimed. So some pretty pictures here of oh, yeah. these things in the past. Uh, you can see actually the countryside has changed just about between every one of these. Now I don't know the age of them, but you know it's uh, so the layout of the fields obviously changes mm. quite significantly over time. The other thing that's worth noting, actually, and I think we've talked about this, Pete, is the uh, the grooves in the top. Mm. Uh, and the standard answer to that is that it's erosion. Um, well, it could be erosion, but, I mean, walking the moors and looking at the granites up there and the sandstones, you very rarely get uh, erosion that looks like that. Yeah, it's it's a very strange effect. That's yeah, so I think they were done on purpose. But, mm. but there's also the always the possibility that they started or had some other form, uh, purposefully, and then because there was already some sort of groove there, it it wore out and created a bigger effect or something like that. It could be, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, they it, it it's not something you come across every day, is it? No, yeah. no. So uh, another thing that's worth mentioning is that a uh, previous name for these stones is th th Three Sisters. Once again, remember that. Mm -hmm. Right, Thombra Henges and the pick in, in the top uh, left is the standard aerial picture that you get everywhere. Um it does look as though someone's doctored it with the uh, lidar, lidar picture on the uh, on the southern edge, though the bottom one. Because mm. uh, I'm sure it doesn't look like that one. <laughs> uh, uh, right, the, other, okay. the other three are mine, so you can see that it's not particularly inspiring if you. <laughs> it's just 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 a bit of an earth rampart. That's uh, it's about twelve foot tall, I guess, on these entrances uh, on mm. the uh, bottom right picture. It's uh, fairly so, sizable. That's not too bad. Well, as you'll see in a minute, the these are big hinges. They're not the biggest yeah. in England, but they, you know, I mean, they're up there. So yeah. 
yeah. the top right picture, you're looking from the northern entrance to the uh, central henge through the southern entrance, and you might just make out a car there. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's oh, wow, car. okay. They are pretty big, <laughs> though. <laughs> what you can't see is the, uh, is the southern henge, which uh, is... Almost, it's not eroded away, but it's it's much more eroded than the other two. Mm. Uh, so, the picture underneath the one with the car is the um, sudden entrance to the central henge, uh, and as I say, that uh, the embankment on the left hand side is about twelve foot high, um, and the picture on the bottom left is the northern henge so you can mm -hmm. see that it's covered in trees and in fact you're not supposed to go in uh, it's just been sold to somebody and mm -hmm. they've put big fences up apparently so you can't get in anymore which uh, mm. i think is totally wrong but they yeah mm. uh, but you know it's you can see it's nice woodland area and you can just make out the embankment there yeah absolutely so and it says that these these are at a place called west tanfield which is nowhere really right, <laughs> I mean, okay Rip, yeah ripon's not the biggest place in the world but... <laughs> so where does where does the name thornborough come from is there a is it like a general area or is there uh, a I think, village i think there's a village name next to it okay thornborough Right. Right. So here you go. This is uh, somebody's done some work on the size and shape of them. And uh, so 860 feet in diameter on the outside. Ooh. So they're pretty big. Mm. Uh, and you'll see the length there. It's about 2,400 feet and 2,480 feet. Uh, yeah, it's reasonable work if the grass is long. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Some archaeologists think that the layout represents the belt stars of Orion, and there is actually a BBC archaeology uh, program they made in the nineties, which you can still get on YouTube, which talks about that. Oh, interesting. Excellent. Uh, if you're interested, I'll send you that link. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. yeah. Um, right, so that's as far as Shannon and I got. Uh, so I went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been sitting drinking whiskey and, you know, two or three whiskeys. And I got quite wound up about it all, actually. When I went to bed, I couldn't, go to, couldn't get to sleep. Uh, and... I don't know whether it's unusual, but all through my life, I've had these sort of three o'clock in the morning inspirations. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I've started calling them my three o'clock voices. So yeah. If, if there's an archaeologist that's ever going to watch this, he's about to switch off now. <laughs> But I recommend him not to because he might learn something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I woke up that uh, uh, that morning at three, uh, and I was thinking, well, if the Thornbra Henges represent Orion's Belt, and they maybe me and the Devil's Arrows, uh, sort of. 10, 11 miles away to the south, do they represent some stars? Oh, hey, star. So I got quite excited when I was laying in bed. I thought, shall I jump out now and check? And I yeah. thought, nah, it's far too comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's a good job that I didn't, actually, because the initial checking, if you don't have any techniques for doing it, Ain't easy. <laughs> yeah. So, could the devil's arrows be the Pleiades? 
So I got up and I looked, and the only way that I could see of looking at stars at that point was to Google Orion and get a picture of Orion and then look around it. Uh, and obviously the Devil's Arrows uh, are a group of stones, so I was looking for more than one star. Yeah. Uh, and the Pleiades looks as though it's roughly in the right direction. Um, and you'll see here the Devil's Arrows, and uh, above the A of Arrows, there's a cluster of stars. That's the Pleiades. So I got something like this, so you can see why I might have thought that way. Yeah, yeah. But you'll also see that there is an open cluster, which is the Hyades. I was going to look up the how you pronounce that. <laughs> so I might be pronouncing them all wrong. <laughs> I think generally with Greek and Latin, you just do your best and, yeah. and sound <laughs> confident. And then... Uh... So we've got Orion, the hunter. We've got Taurus, the bull. And we've got a devil. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> now, the best I could do to do the mapping was this. So... I got one of the um, uh, pictures from Google. So this is my exploration. This is the way I went through it all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I got an Odin survey map, and I marked on the Odin survey map with those rings uh, where the um, um, the hinges were. And I, in this process, I discovered that there was another three hinges. Um which we'll come to later on. but uh, um, And then I laid out this thing that I'd drawn, and it looked pretty good to me. So you've got Pleiades down at the bottom, mm -hmm. uh, and you've got the devil ar Devil's Arrows that seem to line up. Um, you've got the uh, Belt Stars of Orion lining up with the Thombra Henges, uh, and you've got some stars down here that look as though they might line up with Hutton Moor and Canaban. Uh, but you can't really tell anything from that. <laughs> it's just suggestive, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So just just so you know, um, and I'm sure you probably do, but um, Orion, as I said, is the hunter, and the belt stars of Orion, which I've just noticed that my ring has gone to the wrong place. It's too high. Um, but the belt stars of Orion are what the standard model is actually saying uh, the Thornborough Henges represent. Yeah, of course, uh, yeah. Yeah, Alder, Alderbaran is the eye of the bull, so it's quite well known is Alderbaran. Mm -hmm. um, it's the brightest star in Taurus, uh, and well, I'll, I'll show you some pictures of it. And the play IDs is also the Seven Sisters. I remember I mentioned that yeah. Seven and Sisters might become relevant later mm. on. Right. Now, what's the relevance of the Pleiades? So that's, once again, just a picture of them. But I think from very early on, people recognised this particular line. So you've got Sirius on the, uh, on the left. You've got the Belt Stars of Orion. You've then got uh, uh, the Hyades with Taurus. And you've got the Pleiades. So, and you've got the first three, uh, sorry, the first first four um, prime numbers there. Mm -hmm. Right. So, oh, the interesting. Hmm? Did, I didn't know. I didn't. That's new to me. That's fantastic. <laughs> so there's some recognised significance, and there has been throughout history, I think. Uh Ladies, of course, were the Seven Sisters, and there's lots and lots of legends around the world about the Seven Sisters, mainly about the Randy Bull trying to rape them and um, mm. uh, the uh, uh, the hunter hunting the bull. Um, but where else do we find them? So, K 
cave paintings. That looks pretty much like uh, Taurus mm -hmm. and the Pleiades. Uh, and you might even, there's four dots down to the uh, left, which some people think might have been the uh, the belt stars of Orion. Mm. Uh, there is no evidence whatsoever that there was a fourth star, but there is... Um, what do they call the? Oh, there was nebula, a nebula mm. in the uh, next to one of the stars. Now, if that was brighter at some time, it might have looked like a star. Yeah, yeah, this is, right. Yeah. This uh, the Lasso paintings was supposedly about eighteen thousand years old. So. Yeah, I was watching a bit of Martin Sweatman earlier, um, and he was also saying. Uh, he, he he used that picture from Lasco, and also he was saying, I don't know if this has ever come up with your work on the Pleiades as well, that they are sometimes called the seven birds or the six birds. I don't know, I've not come. Not come up. <clears throat> I know that was there was a new one on me as well, so I, I, I thought it might uh, be interesting if anything came up with the devil's arrows and birds as well. That that could be a, a something to look at. Yeah, yes, um Martin suggested that. Um... The Pleiades also had a reputation for being uh, having an evilness attached to them. Ooh. Uh, but I've never, I've searched for it, but I can't find it. So. Mm. I've heard something like that before. Yeah. Mm. You have? You have, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. Be interesting to uh, see if we can find any, uh, anything on that because mm. uh, I did think, well, Let's wait until we get to the point. <laughs> <laughs> Nebra Sky Disc? Yeah, great. Oh, yeah. yeah, so this is Maybe. from Germany, a small town called Nebra. Um, I think it's Bronze Age. Yeah. How about the Anukai? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tales that they came from uh, uh, the Pleiades. Oh, yeah. I yeah, think yeah. he's absolute. Well, <laughs> 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 I, uh, I mean, they're not old enough. Is one of the problems. I think they're only about uh, 100 million years old, um, and they're 450 light years away. So it's not like let's leap in the car and drive down to Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can't see it on this, but apparently the uh, the picture from Harappa is the Pleiades, Taurus and Orion. So you can see that these have got a very deep-rooted cultural significance. Mm, yeah. Right. There was a piece just recently about uh, they represented the oldest stories ever told, uh, which I suspect was just clickbait for somebody's paper. <laughs> Yeah. But they also represent one of the newest. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So uh, <laughs> there are <there's laughs> <standards, laughs> And the, the bit about dancing, uh, if you ever go and try and look at them in the sky, it's very difficult to actually make them out. Because yeah, I always try and count the ones that are vis visible to my eye, and I still yeah, get confused how many have you about got which ones. To? <laughs> uh, well, I know, I, well, I say I get to six, but then I think I've counted one twice, or I'm, yeah, I get confused <laughs> by which ones I've done and which yeah, ones I haven't done. Almost yet. impossible, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, Snowden Star Cluster is about 444 light years away. Uh, as I said before, it's 100 million years old. Um, now, interestingly, there's a thing called the Golden Gate to the Ecliptic, um, which is the, if you picture them in the sky, if you can see them in the sky, the Hades and uh, um, the Pleiades, the Ecliptic actually passes between them. Oh, right. So the sun, the line of the sun, will go through between them. Uh, and so does the moon. So there are legends of, I mean, 
path of the moon is nearly the same as the path of the sun, which is why you get eclipses, obviously. Mm. Yeah. Um, so in Mesopotamia, it was the path of the moon. And just useless piece of information, but it's used as the first step to calibrate the distance of cosmic gas. Oh, right, okay. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't know why, but that mm. sort of fell out. Uh, they've got the reputation, obviously, of being quite a beautiful object, and they are, really. Mm. But how many are there? I mean, most people can see six. Uh, it's claimed that you can see 14 or more if you've got good eyesight. Now, can you measure the distance between them? Mm. There's a reason that I'm asking that. So you can see that I'm not convinced people can see 14. <laughs> They've just counted them all twice. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, let's go back to uh, Yorkshire. So I found these two diagrams here quite early on, and it might have been before uh, I did anything else. But you can see that somebody in the past has drawn the uh, a line from Thornborough Henges down to the Devil's Arrows, and it goes through another henge at uh, Nunwick. <coughs> and from... Uh, the Devil's Arrows going up north uh, past two henges uh, at Canaban and um, Hutton Moor. Now, if you look at the uh, even the picture, that's nowhere near as accurate as the top one. The line through Nunwick actually goes straight through the henge. It's spot on. Oh, yeah, Whereas yeah. The, the one up to Canaban and at Hutton Moor isn't really, um, I wouldn't call it an, uh, an alignment, really, but mm. and we'll find out about that later on. So, but on my map, so I'm still using Odin and Survey maps at this point. Yeah. You do get uh, more technical, don't you, Molly? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, that's what it looks like there. Yeah. Um. It's already some curious alignment, isn't it? Say again. Already a curious alignment. Just it's a curious alignment, and yeah, no one just, has just really on... been able to account for it. Mm. Uh, although it's not far off um, the uh, major uh, lunar set, the, the northern one. But why would you go for the setting rather than the rising? And we'll come mm. to this further on. I also found this thing on the on the left here is uh, uh, some group in Yorkshire trying to advertise the benefits of coming to Yorkshire, but it has quite a lot of sites. And so oh quite... yeah, fantastic! Yeah, I often find that they they produce some sort of similar sort of agencies produce some of the, the similar yeah. things, good things. Yeah, yeah. So the star map then. We like star maps. We'd love them. Remember this? So, mention Yeah, this yeah. Uh, could do better, I thought. <laughs> 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 how, how the hell can I prove this? I, obviously, no one's going to believe that. So, the first thing that happened is I discovered Stellarium. Mm -hmm. If you haven't used it, it's worth using. Yeah. Uh, you've got to be beware of some of its um, nasty features. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> dates, aren't, dates aren't very good. Right. Okay. Right. Um, the picture there is uh, the belt stars are at the top left, mm -hmm. ladies yeah. at the bottom. Uh, I also discovered Google Earth. <laughs> Which is I love Google Earth. Absolutely Google. wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so here you see I've plotted the ones we know about, and there's also a henge at Catterick and one at Cinderby, which I've not mentioned before and won't really come into this much at this mm -hmm. point. So I tried tried to put them together. 
you know, I've got the I've got the stars, I've got I've got the ground. Is there a way that I can put them together? Uh, and I found uh, a product called Linkscape, which is a vector graphics um, product. But it has the advantage that you can do overlays on it. You've got to be mm. able to do overlays to do this sort of thing. Yeah, of course. And yeah. you've also got to keep the aspect ratios the same. If you don't keep the aspect ratio, there's no point in doing it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I also discovered, uh, I spent a while looking around for how do I find out where these places are. <laughs> uh, and megalithic.co.uk is as good a directory as any. There's another two yeah. or three others that I occasionally use. Mm -hmm. but that's that's my go-to. Yeah, yeah, it's a great resource. Really good. I really yeah. like megalithic.co.uk. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. yeah. So the advantage... Uh, to me, has been a Yorkshireman, is they're all free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> now, this picture is bloody impossible to see. Yeah, so... I can just about make out some of the names in the right places. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's... it's uh... So let's make it a bit easier. So on here, I've projected the stars and the, the hinges uh, uh, and the... Thornborough henges are the red dots. Uh, Numwick henge is still in uh, um, blue there. Canabarn mm. is a red dot. And the stars, you can see the, the stars there, are right next to the henges. That is just, that is remarkable. Wow. That's incredible, yeah. Now, what I did to do this... I set up the uh, two nearest stars at Thornborough and got the accuracy there. Mm. And the accuracy at the Devil's Arrows, I had to jiggle it in and out just a little bit. But every time I jiggled it, it meant that the uh, accuracy at Thornborough got more, increased the accuracy. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. So this is the best layout I can possibly get. Now the stones are in um, uh, in green, and the stars are still the stars. Now you can hardly make that out. So can we do better? So there's some stars and some hinges, and stars and stones at the bottom. Is that a river you've marked there as well? That's a river. Yeah, and that'll come into it fairly soon. I bet it will. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I think I know where you're going. Yeah. So, have I mentioned? Yeah, you haven't mentioned those. So, sorry. Accuracy, okay. then. Yeah. So, that's as uh, the left hand picture uh, is obviously Thornborough, and you can see that there is a very slight inaccuracy on the northern edge. Uh, hmm. And that will be less than 100 feet. Right. So on this scale, then, is still a very yeah. paltry inaccuracy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the the distance between the, uh, the Devil's Arrows and Thornbury is 10.4 miles. It's because of the size of the... Uh, the length, yeah. actually seeing the detail is quite difficult. Yes. So you yeah. can you can see that on this picture of um, the right hand picture of uh, the Devil's Arrows and how they pan out. Yeah. Now I think that the um, the stones are not quite laid out exactly to the same scale mm. as uh, they are at Thornborough, but they're not very far out. Mm, so yeah. and i mean and that's you working with all this modern technology yeah imagine doing it, you, it would, years this, ago. this would be impossible without those three products yeah and somebody laid this out three thousand right. five thousand yeah. years ago yeah, yeah exactly exactly how, yeah. how on earth did they do it <laughs> yeah precisely but they did it and and 
it's why no one has ever spotted it before. Because unless mm. you've got this sort of stuff, you can't do yeah. it. No, yeah. you'd have to be. You'd it, have to have a hell of a brain, wouldn't you? And yeah, it's not be... me being a genius or anything. Mm. It's me randomly sta staggering around and falling over something. Try <laughs> trial and error. Yeah, yeah. a couple of whiskeys. And... <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> I find it helps things out a lot. But you're right. But pre computers, you you would you would have had to have been a, a Renaissance man and with a lot of time and money on your hands in order yeah. to be able to work something like this yeah, out. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Now the accuracy at Canaban is it's less than a hundred feet out. <laughs> so that's point one eight of a percent of the full length, <laughs> and you can see the picture on the uh, bottom left there. Yeah. Wow. Now the next one is good. So the line from Annie Lamb down to uh, the Pleiades, you notice it goes just above Mintaka on that picture at the bottom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If I draw from the central hinge down to the Devil's Arrows, it goes just above the Southern Henge. Right. Yeah. Now, that sounds pretty accurate to me. Yeah. It literally just grazes the top of it, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Okay, could this be a random arrangement? So, Paul Devereux did some work in 1989. Uh he obviously didn't know about the stars. So this is just that layout that you see there. Mm. So the hinges and the stones. Um, he ran 800 trials and could found, find no alignment that was like that. So, sorry, could you exp it, explain that again for, to me? Because I'm, I'm missing something. Right, here, so, so he... The, the the hinges and the stones. Yeah. He randomly put them onto a map. Mm. I don't even know that he had a map, actually. He randomly mm. put them in, in position on a computer. I see, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or the computer did it. And then he tried to draw lines through them. Oh, okay. He couldn't get two lines like that. Oh, right. Okay. Because there'll be people who will tell you that Alignment's are easy. Uh, you can line up all the littles in uh, Nottingham. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a classic okay. scurp, isn't it? You yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. Or you right. can find the golden ratio in a in a chair or whatever. That's, yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Now, I, I'm not an expert at statistics, but I tried to work out what the po probability of... Um, uh, the stars being that accurate one. So I used just three positions. So uh, that's the Belk stars, the Pleiades, and Aldebaran. I assume that if um, the uh, uh, the Belk stars were just one position, actually, so it's going on the, okay, center, yeah, yeah. In the central one. Now, each one is less than a hundred feet out and the <coughs> the layout itself is 10.4 miles by I can't remember what it is across but if you multiply it out you get quite a, a a big number of square feet so i then said well if it's a uh, hundred feet out it could be a hundred feet the other way as well mm. um so it's the positioned it within a square that's 200 feet on a side. How many of those 200 feet squares go into that uh, rectangle? Now, for any one of them, the odds are one in 40,000. <laughs> wow. You multiply yeah. them together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 And it's bloody astronomical. So I don't believe, and I mean, there might be faults in my logic, mm. but I don't believe that um, this is accidental. Well, I um, mean, right from the start, it, it, uh, 
let's go right back to um, Robert Baval and the Giza yeah. pyramid layout and yeah. uh, and the Thornborough layout. It, straight off, anyone who spent any time looking at a night sky will see Orion's belt. Yeah. Uh, and no, and you from can't, there, you can't miss it, yeah. no, you can't. And I think you know it, it's it's interesting that Thornborough has that support from mainstream, yeah, um, academics. Because obviously, if you even, you know, still in Egyptology, Robert Baval is not a name that goes down well, is it? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so it is interesting that there is that bit in the mainstream for 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 the for Thornborough. But yeah, just looking at that, you think, well, is this part of a much larger picture? And when you see those two lines, I mean. Uh, yeah, that's pretty stunning, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, it 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 makes sense. It's, it's just just starting from that model of Thornbra and then projecting outwards, it just it, it does make oh. a lot of sense. Now I spent ages trying to find Sirius, which would be some way off to the north. Mm. But the trouble is, there's the there's a lot of parkland being built up there. You know, um, country estates and stuff like that. Um, so I suspect if it ever was there, it's vanished. Indeed. And I, one of my little conspiracy guy things is that I think that country estates are often placed uh, where there is something there before. Um, and often they're ancient monuments or near hill forts or ancient churches. There's uh, There seems to be definitely a correlation there. Well, I did some work that I've not mentioned here, actually, uh, trying to find if the rest of Orion had been put in there. Mm. And I can't prove it, but there are, it's suggestive. But one of the, uh, I think it was Beetlejuice, was where there's uh, an old folly being built yeah. and it falls exactly on the folly. <laughs> So you've got to yeah. ask, why was the folly built? Folly built there, yeah, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. And it also not the first time I was looking at um, oh, Dinus, oh, what is it? Oh, Khan Dinus maybe in Cornwall? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, it's a it's a great big. I think it was a henge, then it was a hill fort, and then someone bunged a massive folly right on the gateway of it as well. So <laughs> yeah. as people definitely do those sorts of things. So, yeah, yeah I wouldn't do. be surprised. Yeah. Just take a break, Adam. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. No problem. I need to go away. I'm going to fill. Okay, so... I then tried to see if I could find out where these missing stones were at um, the Devil's Arrows. Now, this is totally hit and miss. I mean, mm. I have no idea whether this is right, wrong or indifferent. But you can see that top picture uh, shows you where the uh, stars would be in relation to uh, the, the, the layout on the ground, effectively. Mm. So there could have been two at the top. And some of the, the early texts on this, the early descriptions, they're not that old, you know, three or four hundred years old. Uh, but they're quite confusing to read. So you can see I've put a quote from one down there. Two more stones are 200 cubits asunder. Another stone now carried off was 100 cubits more. Does that mean it was 100 cubits further? Mm. Uh, also, there's, it's said that there were two very close together, mm. um, which could be, if you look at the star map, uh, Atlas and Pleione, uh, or it could be Alcyon and that little group underneath it. But the yeah. best I could do was, I mean, if if you could get a, a real, really good lidar on it, you'd look in the uh, field on the uh, bottom bottom left of the field there, and to the right of the uh, uh, of the trees down mm -hmm. at the third stone, it'd be where I would spend my money looking. Yeah. Um, could be right, could be wrong, but you know. It'd be great to run a loaded, as you say, lidar, like really good, high quality lidar, or yeah. um, 
I mean, what you get on the internet is nowhere near up to doing this sort of stuff. No, not for this sort of thing, no. 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 But that was my guess, anyway. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, interesting. Right. You mentioned the river. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... It sort of flows around it, and it used to be called the Isis at one point. Awesome. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So, huh. I think that the uh, the river is represents the Milky Way, and that's one of the reasons why the hinges are where they are, although there are other reasons, as we'll come to later on. Um, but it sounds quite reasonable to me that the position is almost exactly right if you look. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's better than the Nile is to the pyramids. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Whoa. Is there any <clears throat> logic to the being a star map? Why would they build a star map? <laughs> well, as you've already said, Pete, uh, most recognisable stars in the sky. Um, and we already been through some of the legends of the Pleiades. Um, claimed to be the oldest uh, story in the world. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But there are a number of other sites around the world that are claimed to represent Orion's belt as well. So the stones in uh, Orkney, uh, mm. And I've checked those, and they look pretty good. Oh, uh, yes, because the Ness is in between two different sites, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I could see that. All oh, right, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and it does look as though there might be another monument that represents something else up there as well, uh, another star. But the the sizes are just really difficult to handle. Yeah, okay. Uh, um. The pyramids of Xi'an. Oh, well, if you can find the damn things on a map, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Notoriously uh, difficult to find Chinese pyramids. That's right. And that and that place in South America that I can't yeah. pronounce. You're going to avoid saying it, are you? Yeah. <laughs> hey, what a car. Something like that, yeah. So Absolutely. It, does, it does seem as though the people in the past had a lot more affinity to the stars than we do. Uh, and I guess you can see why, actually, because they didn't have bright lights. Uh, they had to have some measure of time. Yeah. Um, so the four positions of the sun give you the first first clue to that, you know, the uh, solstices and the uh, equinoxes. But they're three months apart, so you need something more accurate than that. Uh, so the moon, if you track the moon, it'd give you something more accurate than that. Uh, so I think it's quite logical that they might have done this. But you've got to say, how? Hmm. And how did they get the manpower to do it? Yeah. Yeah. It's just crazy. Yeah, absolutely. And you'll see it gets crazy. The... the... <laughs> The um, just the mind to be able to uh, create the idea and begin to mark out places, yeah, is a mind that needs to be trained, and yes. training means there's some sort of establishment of training as well, yeah, which so you know, before we've even got to people putting a shovel in the ground or an antler pick in the ground or whatever. You've got however many decades of experience, mm. or if not centuries of experience, <clears throat> gone into it. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. you're tracking the movements of the moon, it's an eighteen point six year cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and you wouldn't notice uh, that the first two or three cycles. No, no, and then you'd have <laughs> to double check yeah. it once you and add then, as well. And then the next one, it's going to be cloudy. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So. Just doing that is hard. <laughs> that That's how long it used to take for uh, George to be trained. Really? 19 years, yeah. That's the That was the pro... And, and also the Pharisees as well. They had exactly the same 
training uh the, that's how long their um initiation and their apprenticeship was i wonder if there's a significance in that that is lunar cycle yeah, yeah i'd be surprised what yeah I, I'd, I'd uh like to look into that yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> anyway so i thought i'd go and have a look and see whether there are any of a, other of these things around <laughs> And it seems sensible to start with one that we already think might have Orion's belt there. So the Orion correlation, you know about the Orion correlation. It's, <laughs> yeah. pretty, it's a pretty picture, isn't it? Yeah, it's a nice picture. It's a very nice picture. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That's the layout using my techniques. So mm -hmm. I've got the top two pyramids, the northern pyramids, uh, exactly right. Uh, bang on, see yeah. the error there. <clears throat> and actually, that error is slightly bigger than that thumb. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, they did move five million tons of stone mines. So give them a break. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, at least, I, sorry, that's just for one pyramid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I think that just leveling the site as the. Oh, did well, is golly. Yeah, absolutely. A, a major job. Mm. So, the Robert Bavall uh, theory has been well worked over by standard archaeologists. And the most ridiculous uh, thing that I've heard is that uh, this thing about Edgar Casey. So, it can't be right because it was inspired. Oh, because it's come from a, yeah, okay, <laughs> from a medium, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Oh, dear. If, if you're stooping that low... <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So, and then I put, well, the scene is 10,500 years is just after the end of the Younger Dries. Maybe he was on to something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Far be it from me to be contentious. <laughs> <laughs> right, so are any other stars mapped? So we've seen this picture on the right before i like it so it's <laughs> yeah it's a no it's a great great image that really um really easily explains it you know and then it's something that i can now go out and look to the night sky and look for yeah. as well very easily the gaps between them are yeah. bigger than you think actually yes yeah. yeah i can i can imagine that yeah yeah that's uh, been flattened out obviously for the image isn't it yeah so, that's right yeah yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so the, the, the way the pyramids were was supposed to be at the culmination point, which is the top mm. point of the reach, so due south. Uh, every, everything in the sky gets to its highest point due south. Um, at some point in history, and I think maybe 9,700 B.C., which is actually the end of the Younger Dry. Oh, right, okay. Wow. So, if we're looking for a star map, we'd be looking for Sirius, the Hades and the Pleiades. Mm -hmm. But there is a problem, because if you look at the layout on the ground, the pyramids sort of go at that uh, angle, which is from the southwest to the northeast. And if you plonk that particular picture at more or less the same angle, you'll see that you'll finish up with the Pleiades somewhere in the middle of Cairo, uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe in the Nile, uh, and uh, Sirius somewhere in the desert. Mm. Mm. So to look for this properly, they must have turned the thing somehow. So... Despite the, the the pyramids were at that angle for a reason, but they had to turn the uh, the map to make it work. Um, which is basically what that's saying at the bottom. Yeah. So the picture on the left is where all the pyramids in northern um, uh, northern Egypt are. Uh, so you see that there's one by itself, which is north of Giza. Yeah, to Jeffreys. Yep. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm impressed by that pronunciation. Yeah, just say say it with confidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then you get sort of three clusters at the bottom. Um, and if you look at the the map on the star map, uh, so we've got clusters of stars which I put rings around because they're not that easy to see and then you've got Sirius as uh, a, a single one at the bottom mm -hmm. so the way that star map is is the wrong way up because the clusters have got to be where the clusters of pyramids are if mm. there is a star map there I see okay right you're yeah. happy with that yeah yeah because it took me ages to work that out. <laughs> so let's have a look at it then. If I make, uh, how do you say that again? Jeffrey, <laughs> 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 Jeffrey's, Jeffrey's pyramid. <laughs> Jeffrey, yeah. Jeffrey. <laughs> if I make that serious and I make Sakara the Pleiades. Mm. Uh, you can see that I'm fairly accurate on yeah. uh, Orion's belt, and I get Tabit as being Kappa's pyramid. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't look too bad to me. No, no, that's not that's not too bad at all. Yeah, I mean, not as good as in Yorkshire. But yeah. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> so. We're probably looking at uh, Alderbaran being um, this this. No, yeah, I'm not sure what that is. Nisua, or however you pronounce it. There's Sahure and there's Nefer. Yeah, and they and they had an attempt to build something for the IEDs. Anyway, there's uh, three pyramids there, and there's five stars. So. Mm. Yeah. And there's loads going on at Sakara, isn't there? And there's it's not loads. just it's not just yeah. one or two uh, things. There is a yeah. lot going on there, yeah. 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 Uh, and of course, the uh, the Nile represents the the Milky Way. Mm -hmm. All right, so right. it looks better on here, actually. Right. Yeah, that that's yeah. a little less uh, right. Yeah. Letters. Well, Sirius isn't bad, is it? Sirius isn't bad. Yeah, and you can see that these clusters. If you view them as a cluster, they're pretty good. Mm, absolutely, yeah. 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 So I think there's something in that. And uh, it's interesting, actually, because uh, I was watching a Hancock thing on YouTube not so long ago, and he was saying, uh, and someone suggested that there's a wider map. So. Well, um, um... And, you know, I'd done this well before I watched that. Yeah, um, I was going to say, uh, obviously Wilson and Black that did work on a, um, uh, I think two star maps, one in southeast and one in southwest Wales, and Hugh Evans has done yes, his work. Yes, yeah, that's right. They did, work in, yeah. in north in in, in Grenade, but yeah. um, what's interesting is that there is also meant to be uh, some unpublished Alan Wilson work where. He, where which he did about why the pyramids are located where they're located, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's to do with a star map because he would have already had that sort of thing in mind. Yeah, coming from the work in South Wales, he would have already been thinking in terms of as above, so below because that's where the work was generally yeah. heading. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's something very similar to that in the, to this in in the in the unpublished Alan Wilson stuff. I really wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't until I moved the uh, the background map and just had the objects themselves that mm. I realised how how good it was. Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so I, I was quite impressed at that point. I mean, they have twisted it around as well, which makes it... Yeah. Do you think that's to do with the, the, the where the Nile bed is as yeah, well? Yeah, it's where the yeah. Nile goes. Yeah. 
So they sort of sort of warped it just yeah. to, to fit with the natural form of the river. That's right. I right. mean, if the if right. if the Giza pyramids were put there because they reflected their genuine position in the sky at that point in time, mm. uh, you're stuck with that angle. So yeah. if you want to extend it, how do you do it? You know, you don't want your work crews toiling away in the middle of a boiling hot desert. No, no, absolutely not. No. No, you want to keep it near your um, your where people are, where your workers are, where your food production is, all that sort of That's stuff. Right, don't yeah. Even if your quarry's five hundred miles away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trivial, trivial. <laughs> you just levitate it. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, speaking <laughs> of, let's go with this woo woo then. Yeah. <laughs> right. The devil's arrows is. Uh, 54 degrees, which doesn't sound much, but it's actually three-fifths of the angular distance between the uh, equator and the pole, if you work it out. So uh, Giza is a third of the distance. So the both significant distances from the uh, equator or the pole, whichever you... Yeah. Yeah. So the angular distance between the sides is 24 degrees which is one thirtieth of a circle. So we've already seen that they've got three monuments at the map. Mm. Right, spell. And both sites are part of a bigger star map, as we can see. Both sites, the walls of the monuments, if the sun was shining, would have glowed bright white because... At Thornborough, they covered him in gypsum. Uh, and, of course, at Giza, it was polished limestone. Mm. So tell me that's a coincidence. Mm. <laughs> um, the angle of Menkara's pyramid is 51.33 degrees. And the main alignment from Thornborough to the Devil's Arrows, if you measure it from due east is 51.2 degrees. Right. But, yeah. Hmm. The, all the pyramids have a slightly different angle, by the way. And I thought yeah. to begin with, they were all going to have the same angle, but they don't. No. Right. In Egyptian mythology, Osiris is represented by uh, in the sky by Orion. Mm -hmm. I've got a separate thing on here. Behold, he has come as Orion. Behold, Osiris has come as Orion, etc., etc. It just goes on. Ah, interesting. From the pyramid text. So Orion was significant to them. Both sites use the river to represent the Milky Way. Mm hmm. Yeah. A river, you 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 were in uh, Yorkshire was once called the Isis. Very well. And now, for my bet as a Yorkshireman, the hinge alignments uh, are more accurate in Yorkshire. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Stick that to you, Egyptians. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. <laughs> Geezer was just a practice run for That's Georgia, right. yeah, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I found this. So this is from a paper um, on... Yeah, it's one of them sites where people publish papers. Yeah, OK, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the, the link was about three miles long, so I've shortened it to, using tiny UR and all that. But he, he's written an entire paper... Uh, where he is convinced that the uh, technologies that they used for managing the people and that sort of thing were already in use elsewhere in Europe. Right, OK. okay. Yeah. Well, we've done a little bit on connections between Britain and ancient Egypt before, haven't we, Adam? And yeah. it's definitely something we'll we'll cover cover more of. And it's something that also... It just regularly reoccurs, even, yeah. um, you well, know. Well, that thing you were mentioning earlier on about finding a 
whatever it was. No, oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, um, uh, the thing that came to mind was even in the mainstream, you have Tim Darvel who did his Stonehenge um, calendar work mm-hmm. and he linked it back to an yeah. Egyptian calendar as well. So um, it's just something, it's just a sort of like a, a meme that keeps up, keeps on yeah. popping up, isn't it? This idea of a connection between Egypt and Britain at that, that period. So it's really interesting. I, I, saw, I saw a, a paper uh in the 19th century paper talking about um, the kind of religious crossover between Britain and Egypt with a kind of hermetic kind of Essenian link. Mm. Only So the, the early church would have been very much within what people would call mystery schools or things like that. So it's something I want to dig into a little bit more, actually, as well. I've got that paper. We'll, we'll have a look at that. Yeah, great. Fair. Yeah. Let's just talk a bit about dating. Mm. Um, so you get all sorts of dates for these things, and we all know that they're impossible to date, really. Mm. <laughs> you know, you find a piece of wood underneath a hinge. Well, yeah. How long has it been there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the preferred date seems to be about 2800 BC, uh, and I'll show you later on quite a lot later on, actually, but later on, that that's not too far from what I think the exact date is. Okay. And I do give an exact date to the year. Oh, bloody hell. Mm. Um, it, the, the whole area in Yorkshire there is ancient, um, and certainly there was a Cersus, Cersus? How, how do you pronounce yeah. that, Pete? Uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, How do you was, like? That, yeah, it was built across the Henge site uh, around about 3,500 BC, so it's before the Henges. Um, English Heritage says the site was used from 4,000 BC. Uh, these guys on this website have got a window of 8,000 to 4,000 BC. Oh, wow. 8,000 is pretty early, if you think yeah. about it. Um. Now, both Aldebaran and the Pleiades are in Taurus. The age of Taurus is 4,300 to 2,150 BC. So that agrees with the dates of the build. This is processional age. Yes, processional age. Yeah. Uh, But as I say, I'll give you the exact date to the year later on. (laughs) Right, how are we doing for time, guys? It yeah. is twenty to five, so whatever. I can I can go on for a bit. We're not booked in for curry until six, so. <laughs> no. Well, shall we just do this bit on the builders? Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Great. yeah. Because that will bring the first bit to a relatively logical end. Yeah, we so can, we who can actually always... built these things? If you sorry, I was just going to say if you've if you've got more to go, we can always do another. Uh, there's, there's quite a lot more. Yeah, I think. Yeah, we're actually, <laughs> yeah we'll do. We can do another... <laughs> no, that's fine. We'll we'll just try and book in another one. You know, yeah. Absolutely fine. Yeah. I, I, I'm up. I'm really enjoying it. So. Yeah. Cool. Sorry. Go for it, Molly. So during the Ice Age, there was practically no one in England, mm. and certainly no one in Scotland. Uh, although there seems to be an ongoing debate about Ireland now. I don't know whether you noticed. Yes, I have. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the earliest remains that we know about were famous Cheddar Man, and there's a debate about the skin colour of Cheddar Man and mm. whether he's dark skin and blue eyes or whether that's just a fallacy or whatever. Mm. And... To be quite frank, I don't care. <laughs> no, no. It was it was somebody that has passed a very few genes on down the line, so mm. I might have a gene or two that belong to them. <laughs> mm. Um. Now, those first people were almost completely replaced uh, six thousand years ago. So the Neolithic peoples came in. Uh, at that age, and only 1% of the genes of the people before that uh, continued down. So 
there have been a number of waves of migration, mainly starting uh, in Turkey and the mm. Black Sea area. Um, so the particular wave that brought these people here um you can see how it sort of develops and it goes there's a northern link and a southern link so the people it split into two effectively and uh, the people bred with the locals so by the time they got to britain they, they were relatively distinct populations but both populations were represented in the neolithic people mm -hmm. Um, so the new population were late Stone Age, so there weren't Bronze Age or anything like that. We don't think there were anyway. Mm. Um, and they obviously came from uh, somewhere around Turkey or Greece. So I found this nice quote saying, "The ancient Greeks were Britain's first farmers." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, life was pretty hard. Uh, lifespans averaged about 35 years. Uh, there's not a lot of evidence of violence in this period. Yeah, very, very um, isolated where there is mm. as well. Yeah, yeah. Now, it appears to me as though there was a fairly common culture along the uh, western seaboard of Europe. So down here you've got um, the location of all the standing stones that are known on uh, megalithic.co.uk. sure it's not all of them, but it's a good representation. Mm. So you can see that it's all along the uh, western seaboard. Um that seems to point to sea travel along the coasts and trade and cultural interaction. Absolutely. I mean, once again, you can't prove it. Uh, because how do you know, you know, when you find a tool or something like that, how do you know where it really came from? Yeah. Um, but um, I'm fairly convinced that these people travelled and... They had a common culture. Wouldn't surprise me if the centre of their culture uh, was in in Brittany. Mm. All right. At, at Karnak. Karnak, yeah. Yeah. I think the um the cluster around the southwest of France as well points to seafaring because you'd you'd want that to fill in that gap to the yes. Mediterranean rather yeah. than having to go around Spain every time. I think that's uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I also think that they had contact with Malta. Oh, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Mm. Uh, but once again, you can't prove it, can you? And yeah. no one, I don't think anyone can prove it. Mm. Right. Have to have what a happened, very lucky what, find, I think. Yeah. So what happened to these people then? So somewhere in the late third millennium, they vanished almost completely. So the graph here shows the what I call the hinge builders, but the Neolithic people. And you can see them along the bottom there. And those are all the finds and the DNA that we've extracted from them. And then the Beaker people came into uh, England uh, starting somewhere around about 2400 BC. And you can see that it was an almost 90% replacement. So the one percent of the people uh, of the DNA that got passed on from uh, the pre-Neolithic people, there's not much of that left after. All no. <laughs> uh, but it's quite a mystery, really. No one knows what happened to them. So as it says here. The Beaker people started to move into Britain two thousand about two thousand four hundred. And this graph on the bottom here is what happened in Spain. So you can see the Neolithic people again along the bottom, but it was only forty percent replacement. Now it's interesting that all the DNA or nearly all the DNA that they found of the uh Neolithic DNA that they found in the population going forward is in females. 
So it looks as though the Beaker people killed off or somehow stopped uh, the males of the Neolithic people breeding and took over the women. Right, the Beaker people were the next uh, wave of uh, people coming out of the Middle East. Mm. Uh, the name for the pottery, obviously. So mm -hmm. because that's an example of them. Um, they do have a much more hierarchical society and they seem to be much more warlike. So kings and, you know, warlords. And they're the, the metal workers as well. Yeah, and they are the first Bronze Age, well, the mm. first recognised Bronze Age people. Mm. Um. <clears throat> so it'd be interesting to see how as more dna evidence rolls in over the years how these um if these paradigms will change much yeah uh, yeah uh, that would uh, be uh interesting to see because there's just a lot of these things are often based on what limited data there is yes and, uh, that's right and there can't this be sort enough. of lab work is very expensive yeah. as well. Um, well there can't be an awful lot can they so... no no absolutely not so the quote down at the bottom is what I was saying about the uh, uh, the Beaker people invading a village and killing the men and taking the women. <laughs> Not a nice time to live, probably. So the possible fates of the Neolithic builders, uh, so we could have had ethnic cleansing. Uh, interestingly, they found the earliest plague victims around 3000 BC in Beaker people. Uh, so maybe there was a plague e e epidemic. Mm. Um, we also know that there's a cooling period starting about 3000 BC and running to about 2700 BC that could have thinned out the population. But interestingly, the dates for the um, main monuments are still around about 2800 BC. Mm. It's into that cooling period. <clears throat> and then there was the two, three, four, five event. So I don't know whether you know about the two, three, four, five event. I'd l we'd love to hear some more. All right. Yeah. So it's one of the worst years on record uh, for tree ring analysis. So the narrowest tree rings. Uh, but people talk about two, three, four, five, but you can see from this graph of tree rings that it wasn't. Um, a single event it happened repeatedly so starting at 2390 there was a bad bad few years uh, and back down to 2300 so it was sort of a continual period of conditions getting worse and worse and worse and in fact after 2300 they continued to get worse right down to about 2000 but by then the neolithic people had gone anyway so we're mm. not too interested in it <laughs> <clears throat> so you can see the uh, the bottom graph uh gives you a wider picture mm -hmm. and you can see that the the bits well they've got the bit in grey has been 2,200 to 1,900, as you can see. But uh, mm. before then, you've got some fairly spectacular drops. Yeah. So comparison with modern times, the, U uh, the, the average tree rings here are about 50 um, millimetres wide. Uh, the uh, summer without... Um, uh, the <laughs> year without a summer, which was 1816, had a width of 100. Right. So significantly worse than that. Mm. So there's records of 20-year-long rainfall in Ireland. The whole of Ireland had to be evacuated according to um, the... Have I got... I've got the reference to it, but some sort of... Um, I can get the reference. I've got it somewhere. Uh mm according to uh, one of the uh, Irish annals. Um, you would have heard, heard of George Dodwell, but he uh, 
had this theory. He was a astronomer, an Australian astronomer, um, about 1920. And you know sundials, they have that standing up bit, uh, which casts the shadow. Well, that would change depending on the axis of the Earth. And he claims to have found ancient ones that had uh, them at a different angle. And he's tracked it back to, he thought that the Earth's axis had changed in two, three, four, five. Mm. Right. Uh, and of course, Bishop Usher, who we all know well, mm -hmm. you probably don't, but you do know the date, 4004 BC was when the well started. <laughs> and I think it's why we don't have civilizations going back beyond then, because mm. no one looked. There's no point in looking if the well started in 4004. And it's only recently that mm. people might have been changing, but you've got the, the whole theory that, you know, civilization started in yeah. 2800 or whenever it was. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Right, so around the, at, at, at that time, actually, the Fifth Dynasty in uh, Egypt ended. So total replacement of dynasty. Uh, and it was the beginning of the end for the Old Kingdom. So the Old Kingdom potted on for a bit longer, but not much longer. The last temples in Malta were built around that day. Uh, the Neolithic builders in Orkney vanished. And that's not surprising because the Neolithic builders in the rest of England did. Um, this is a quote, 2,350. There was a near simultaneous collapse which saw great societies crumble. The end of the uh, early dystonic period in uh, Mesopotamia um, just interestingly, um, for revised chronology, um, Alan Wilson puts the beginning of Egyptian civilization at this point. So, oh. so, so rather than the uh, sort of the, an intermediate intermediate period or whatever, he sees that as the start. And so, it's quite interesting to think about some destruction, you know, some sort that of destruction be before that, and then the beginning <clears throat> of dynastic oh. culture. Oh. Then, so. Um, I just thought it was an interesting little um, correlation there. That's right. 20 years later, we get Sargon um, beginning his conquests. And, uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure he's a very nice man. <laughs> Charmer. <clears throat> 20 years of catastrophic flooding in China. And also in China, but a different culture, uh, collapsed because it was so wet. So it looks as though the whole of the Northern Hemisphere was very wet. Mm. Chinese legends speak of multiple suns in the sky, a flying dragon and nine years of flooding. Ooh, and nice. there is a suggestion, and I wouldn't want to say more than a suggestion, that there might have been an impact in uh, southern Iraq around that time. So you can see here, this is a reconstruction of populations, the human population of Europe, actually. Um, and you can see that it increases and increases up until around about this is be, be, this is before now so it's a bit difficult to see oh it was bp yeah okay rather than dc yeah yeah but you can see there was a collapse around about three thousand mm -hmm. uh and then it built up again and they built the hinges and then it built up again and then you had another collapse at two three four five mm. now those collapses just have to put them in context really so if we had a major event the first thing that had happened is that 
food transport would stop into the cities. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? The Angry, strong, starving people. The strong take all the food mm -hmm. and everyone else starves. And it'll probably take five or six weeks for them to starve. So it's not long before the civilization totally collapses. In those days, it would have been a bit different, obviously, because uh, it would be crop failures. Um, and you'd see pe people have their crops stored. So if you had a disaster at this point in the, uh, in the year, for instance, they'd do okay until next summer. Mm. And it would be next winter that they'd be having problems. Um, but you can see how you'd, you don't need much to cause uh, a, a, a culture, an organised culture, to collapse and yeah. go right back into uh, horribleness. <laughs> <laughs> so I think what happened is that there was, there was, there was some ethnic cleansing. I mean, these people were organised as uh, as warriors or anything like that. So somebody coming in and fighting would be totally uh, against what they knew. Um, they had some disease, probably made worse by the cold and the lack of food. Yeah. And then if any of them did survive, they eventually got the kick at two, three, four, five. Hmm. So I think the um, Aurea Linda book puts uh, a date around around that point as well. Yes, like 20, I think it does, doesn't 21 it? Twenty one fifty or something like that. Yeah. yeah, very interesting. So that's the initial bit for Yorkshire. Fab, that was great. There's more yeah. where this came from. <laughs> Brilliant. No, 